All right, welcome back to another episode of Kingdom Fishing Adventures. Uh, I'm in the truck right now. Uh, that's not because I want to be one of those dudes that uh, talks about things in their trucks and posts them on Facebook, uh, but it's because the places that I'm going today are along the, the highway, so they could be kind of loud. So I thought I would uh, give the intro in here and then we'll hit up these spots. So I'm going to stop at about five, six places today, and I call it the circuit because it's all along uh, the Columbia River on the highway. Um, and so what I do is I stop at each of these spots um, and I make this little circuit. Uh, we're gonna be looking for some smallmouth today. So hopefully we can get into a couple at least. Um, so we'll just kind of see what happens. Here we are at the first spot. I'm sure you can hear the pump in the background, but this is our spot. And I see a nice size I see a nice sized smallmouth down in there already. So bear with the noise. Let's see what we can do. This smallmouth is nice. Let's see if we can get him. I think he sees me already though. Oh, here he comes already. Oh no, he passed it up. He's coming back. He's coming back. coming back oh, he's swimming away Here we go. Yeah, we got him. We got him. Nice one. Nice one. Oh, come here, bud. Nice one. It's a couple pounder, pound and a half. He's, dude, come on. He is not giving up the fight. Let's bring him up. Oh, big guy. There we go. Oh, hold on. There we go. Look at that guy. Look at him. Okay. Let's get a measurement or a weight on him. Oh wait, I was way off. 2.47. 2 2.47. That's a nice fish. 2.47. So we finally got him. There he is in all of his glory. Nice fish. Nice Columbia River smallmouth. Oh. Come on. Coat. Come on. I dude, this fish is getting me mad. I don't know what to do. What the heck? Come on. So this is a spot that my family and I call Noodle Point. Uh, it's not the real name. We just call it that because my daughter, I called her Noodle when she's a baby. And she caught a bass out here on this little point. So we called it Noodle Point. As part of our um, family devotions, every night we get together and we go over a catechism. But we also work our way through a chapter of the Bible a day. And so the kids, they read the chapter for that day uh, during their homeschool. And then that evening when we do family devotions, we go over it. And we just finished Jonah. And I've read Jonah, obviously, many, many times. And even in college, I taught a class about Bible study methods using the book of Jonah. Uh, so I'm pretty familiar with it. But... 
it's interesting when I'm teaching it to my kids because, you know, kids are always used to that Sunday school kind of interpretation of Jonah. And they focus on Jonah as this prophet who disobeys the Lord, but then he obeys God. And that's a lot of times where kids land. And as I was teaching and, and we were going through it together as a family, it's just interesting how m many different themes there are in Jonah. Very important, very critical themes uh, that kind of just weave their way throughout the story. Because, I mean, when you think about it, in the first chapter of Jonah, um, Jonah receives a call to go to Nineveh, that great city, um, and call out against it, uh, tell them to repent. But Jonah instead flees from the presence of the Lord, and he gets on a ship to go down to Tarshish. Um, and while he's on the ship, uh, there's a great storm and wind, and they're being tossed to and fro. The sailors, the Gentile sailors that are... Oh, I'm snagged here. The Gentile sailors that are on the ship, they are calling out to their gods, and they are saying, you know, calling out to their gods for help, and, and then... They go down to Jonah. The captain goes down to Jonah and he's like, dude, what are you doing sleeping? Get up. Go call out to your God. So he gets up and the sailors, they cast lots to see who, whose fault this is. Why this storm has come upon them. Obviously, it's got to be somebody's fault. And the lot falls on Jonah. And so they're like, what have you done? And it says that he told them that he was fleeing from the presence of Yahweh his God. And so Jonah, in what seems like an act of chivalry, says, throw me in the ocean and everything will be okay. You guys will live. The storm, storm will subside. Well, the sailors, even though they're Gentiles, they don't want Jonah to die. So they try as hard as they can to get to, to land, but they're unable to. So they do toss Jonah in and Jonah uh, is swallowed by a great fish that the Lord had appointed uh, to swallow him. Chapter 2 is Jonah uh, in the belly of this great fish. And the, and the great fish takes him down to the depths of the ocean. It says that the weeds were wrapped about his head. That he was at the root of the mountain. So way, way, way down, down into the depths of the sea. And Jonah calls out to God from there, and God answers. And Spitz has the, the fish spit Jonah up on dry ground. Chapter 3, Jonah goes, uh, God tells him to go into Nineveh again. This time he obeys somewhat. It says that he went a one day's journey into a city that, had, that was big enough for a three day's journey. But he goes in, he tells them to repent uh, or else in 40 days, the Lord's and Yahweh's going to destroy them. And the Ninevites, they all repent. Even the king puts out a decree to, uh, for everybody to repent. Then, chapter 4, we understand why Jonah didn't want to uh, preach to the Ninevites. He goes out there and he says, he sits, it says, east of the city to see what would happen to the city. So he's still hopeful that God will destroy it, even though they've repented. And so he makes himself a booth, and he, like a little shelter, and he sits out there. And God um, says to Jonah, are, are you good to be, you know, angry? And, and Jonah's like, yeah, I'm so angry, I want to die. And he says that the reason that he didn't want to preach and in, in, in call for repentance of the Ninevites is because he knew the character of God, that God was gracious and merciful, abounding in love, and that if they repented, God would save them. And Jonah, frankly, didn't want them to be saved. And now he would rather die than see them saved. And so God teaches him an object lesson by, as Jonah's sitting there in this heat, causing this plant to grow up over him and give him shade. And so Jonah is like really appreciative of this plant. But during the night, a great worm comes 
eats up the plant and then the sun the next day withers the plant away. No more plant for shade. It gets Jonah angry again, saying that he would, he would die. He wants to die again, die now. And God says, so you're worried about this plant that you had nothing to do with that I created. And you're mourning the loss of this plant, which was here one day and gone the next. But you expect me to not mourn those of this great city, 120,000 people, plus many cattle, it says. You know, a lot, of, a lot of things that God created. God is basically saying, of course, I'm going to be gracious and merciful to um, these people, right? And so there's a lot of lessons here. One... God is gracious and merciful and loving, even to uh, the wicked. It's We're all wicked before God changes our heart and saves us, right? Uh, also, we see this theme of God's sovereignty and God's control of nature. You know, God appointed the storm. God appointed the fish to swallow Jonah. God appointed and God d- does all these things. Even with a disobedient prophet... God still manages to save the sailors that are Gentiles just through these acts. Jonah didn't do anything there. But at the end of chapter 1, it says that the sailors made offerings and worshipped Yahweh. Right? So he saved these, these sailors despite Jonah. God does all that he pleases. There's also, you know, the, the theme of fleeing from the presence of the Lord. Jonah flees. He goes down to Tarshish. He goes down to uh, down into the ship. He goes down into the the fish's belly. He goes down into the depths of the sea. He's as far away from God as you can get, right? But yet, even there, God is still there. There's also the the related theme to that 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 sometimes when you're trying to get away from God, God will give you just that. God appointed that fish to take Jonah to the depths of the sea, as far away from him as possible. It's kind of like God said, all right, Jonah, you want to be away from my presence? Here you go. And then once Jonah was there, he didn't like that very much. So there's just a, there's a lot of good theology in Jonah. There's a lot of good lessons to be learned. We, see, we often focus on Jonah when really the, the purpose of Jonah is to focus us on God and what he's done through Jesus Christ. His great mercy, his great love, his grace that he gives uh, people. We're talking about the Ninevites. The Ninevites were the enemies of the people of God. And yet God had compassion on even some of them. And that shouldn't be surprising, right? I think about who and what I was, and what I was doing before God... Uh, created a new heart in me and and caused me to be born again. And it should be no surprise the way that uh, God is gracious and merciful. So it's just a good, really good story. And and it goes much farther than a nice Sunday school uh, story. And there's many other themes there too. I mean, we could go on and on. That book is just rich in theology, um, narratives like that, stories are such a great way to get at, the, that the Bible uses to get at the character and the, the just greatness of God. I love biblical narratives. All right, guys. Well, as you can see, I'm back home. All we managed to do today was catch the one fish. Now, it was a nice fish. It was two and a half pounds, but uh, that's all we could really muster. It was a weird day. Got started at a weird time. Uh, So hopefully next time is better, but we'll take one fish. One fish is better than no fish. Um, So we also got to talk about the book of Jonah. Um, So... Once again, a rough day, but not a bad day. It seems to be kind of the theme around here. 
Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Kingdom Fishing Adventures. Please subscribe and like, leave comments. Um, and as always, remember, live in light of the kingdom.